been here properly and I don't know what I was expecting to be honest. I think I was expecting some kind of rational debate. Um, I didn't realise that basically you'd have uh, essentially somebody screaming about uh, Islam next to somebody screaming about Christianity and then you've got and they're, bas ba they're both just basically arguing that uh, one is better than the other. And that's basically what you have at Speaker's Corner. I don't know, maybe on other days, maybe more sunny days, it's uh, it's a little bit better, but um, let me tell you something maybe you don't realise about Speaker's Corner, and maybe something that all of those guys don't realise about Speaker's Corner, is that... It's quite difficult to see, let me point out it properly. It's very windy today, apologies. Um, over there is a thing called Marble Arch, Oxford Street. You've got a couple of strange statues, including one there of Genghis Khan. Beyond it, the Odeon Cinema, and then down on the ground, over near the Odeon, is a little plaque that says the site of the Tyburn Tree, and the Tyburn Tree was uh, a sort of central London place for uh, mass execution of, in inverted commas, criminals, um, and it had that function for about 700 years, Tyburn and the Tyburn Tree. Speaker's Corner actually came about because of Tyburn in the sort of ancient rite that you had uh, the right to speak your mind before your death, you know, last any last words, that sort of thing. That's where Speaker came, Speaker's Corner came from. Nothing to do with, you know, our prided feeling of democracy and freedom of speech or any of that lark. It was literally when the uh, aristocracy were about to put a whole shed load of people to death, uh, they would let them stand around the speaker's corner and let people listen to them before they um, they hanged them. So I kind of felt like I wanted to hang myself, actually, after listening to a few of those guys out there. There was got one guy that made uh, perfect sense. Um, he was talk He was showing the uh, $1 bill and the, uh, the, the Illuminati triangle and telling everybody that um, if it's Christianity, if it's um, any religion, really what they're doing is, is they're worshipping the sun and uh, that all religions are essentially the same. I, I kind of like that guy. He was right, but couldn't seem to hold a, um, a thread or a crowd. So I, th I believe actually most people thought he was in that case. So uh, I wanted to sort of speak uh, quickly, um, sort of in a response to uh, a video put on YouTube by uh, Spiritual Entertainer, aka Danny Shine. Hello. Uh, it was uh, it was called Committed Fundamentalists, and it was about a um, an article from the Independent about a guy called. Richard Dart, um, who was convicted for eleven, uh, to 11 years in prison for supposed acts of terrorism, even though this guy uh, seems to be possibly uh, the worst so-called terrorist you could imagine, in that uh, he never actually managed to uh, make it to a terrorist training camp in Pakistan. Uh, uh, he never actually managed to learn how to create a bomb. He didn't seem to really manage to do, to learn how to do anything at all. And it's, to be honest, it's a bit odd to really sort of understand why he was, um, you know, put put in prison or he's being sent to prison. It seems a bit weird because it doesn't really seem like he actually did anything. Which is um, sort of, I guess, how things are nowadays because, of course, uh, also in the news there's a lot of stuff about so-called uh, 
Assad, so so called uh, using chemical weapons, except there seems that there aren't any chemical weapons. And it seems that they are thinking about possibly now military action in Syria, even though um, the so called red line of the, using uh, chemical weapons actually didn't happen at all and hasn't happened. It seems the chemical weapons, the symptoms that are being observed, are actually the uh, symptomatic of the use of concentrated tear gas rather than any kind of dodgy chemicals. And it's uh, really, really a sort of like an echo of uh, what happened in Iraq. Uh, because they, uh, in Iraq, one of the uh, things that people were saying was that um, Saddam Hussein was using a thing called Agent 15 which is, um, it's called BZ, BZ uh, gas. It's basically a, a big hallucinogen, it mucks with your mind. It basically turns you into an incapacitated monkey and uh, it sort of blocks your higher brain function. You hallucinate wildly and you start climbing things. Um, and it only lasts for like a couple of days and then you're back to normal. So it's um, an incapacitant rather than some kind of nerve, a you know, proper nerve agent that's gonna kill you or anything. Uh, and it seems that that, that, I mean, that was used to justify a war in Iraq. It turned out that that gas wasn't being used, even though it was uh, non-lethal. And that, it seems, is this, uh, what Assad is being accused of using as well. So history repeating itself once again.